wonderful. Yeah, oh, thank you. It is the best celebrity bio Four, I have read. Three, thank you very much. That's two, nice. One. Joan, you seem to be a very private person, not somebody who would enjoy bringing their personal life out in front of the public. What made you decide to write your autobiography? Well, I'm a private person in some ways, but I have much less problem bringing, the, the, say, the less flattering side of my life out in public, and I think that I really wanted to, if, for whoever might be interested, kill a few myths and, and write about what my life's been been about, and I did that. And I don't always like the um, the heroine of the story, mm -hmm. because it's not always very flattering. But I think it's important to put what what be honest and put you know how it was. Your book is very honest and extremely candid. Were there times when you were writing it that you were tempted to gloss over some of the juicier parts? Well, I'm sh I left some of the juicier parts out. Believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not. Really. But no, I, you know, my background is Quaker. Quakers sit for one hour a week in absolute silence and they wrestle with their conscience. And I think that's made a difference in my life, even though I, did, I went when I was little and didn't like it. Then I didn't go for 22 years. But I've always experimented with silence and trying to listen to whatever inside directs us. Because outside, it's directing you every which way. Mm -hmm. In your book, you write that your greatest gift is your singing voice. Does that voice still bring you as much pleasure? It brings me more now, partly because I trained it for the last eight years when I realized I was having trouble with my voice, and that took a few years to realize because I'd never had any training at all. And so now it's in better shape, and of course I am, and that has to do with just my age, I'm sure, and shedding some of the whew, turmoil, the inner turmoil that goes on from the teenage years for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, after 30 years in the music business, does it concern you that you are no longer part of the mainstream uh, music industry, that your records are not getting airplay? Well, you know, my, I was never part, in my opinion, I was never part of mainstream. Um, on the other hand, in Europe, it's a very different scene from here, for instance. I mean, I arrived in Turkey and my new album was going great guns, so it sort of depends on which part of the world and what you what you consider to be mainstream. And also, m my career is far from ended. I'm about to go into a, a next year as a 30th anniversary of the singing and make an album for that and do a tour for that. And um, I think singer Tracy Chapman and people like that have probably turned the industry back into uh, a kind of a plateau that's going to make it easier for me once again to do what I do and do it well and have it available to people. Mm -hmm. In your book, you describe yourself as ripping through middle age. How are you different from Joan Baez in the 60s and 70s? Well, I had a child. That'll do it to you, for <laughs> one. And if it doesn't, then you probably haven't been a very good mom. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we all, it's a process of slowing down and not being so anxious um, to, to prove that you're right and being a little bit more patient and probably a little bit more cynical, although I've always been cynical. And people have imagined that I was sort of somehow dreamy-eyed about creating utopia, and I never was. I've always been very practical in what I thought could happen as opposed to what I wanted to have happen. When you look back over your career, is there anything that you would do differently? Um, the basic answer to your question is not really. In other words, when I signed with Vanguard in 1959, I signed with the lesser of two companies as far as commercial the as commercial aspect went. It could have been CBS or it could have been Vanguard. I chose Vanguard. I'm glad I did because of everything about them. They were a classical music company. So probably enriched me musically um, and so on. And I've always been like that and, and I still am. And I'm, I'm, I think that's probably right for me. Mm -hmm. In your book, you also detail your relationship with Bob Dylan. Are you surprised by the public's fascination with your, your relationship? Well, people have a huge fascination in other people's relationships, so it doesn't <laughs> surprise me at all. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, one thing that Bob Dylan has done recently is link himself with someone else, more contemporary, Tom Petty, and go out on tour to reach younger audiences or newer audiences. Have you thought of doing something like that? Um, I've done some of it in Europe, actually, and, and I will probably do more of it. I, you know, when I'm talking about next year being the 30th anniversary, honestly, and never in my life have I put my career as the 
number one and priorities of what I'm going to do. And now since my kid has left home, three dogs died, and the gardener racked up my car, there's any <laughs> reason to go home. So I, I figure those are all signs, and it's time for me to... Um, to really take things more seriously, more musically seriously, so I'm about to, and I, I assume that'll include working with other musicians. Well, I didn't even get a chance to ask you about your songwriting or anything else, but they're giving me the wrap. I've really enjoyed talking mm -hmm. with you, and best of luck. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye-bye.